Hello, I'm Diana Safati. I'm the Director of the Cancer Control and Screening Research Group. I'm going to be talking today about um, ethnic inequalities in cancer outcomes in New Zealand. So one of the questions I'm going to be asking today are, when it comes to cancer, does New Zealand have an uneven playing field and do health services have a role in addressing it? So what I'm going to talk, to, um, uh, talk about today, first of all, what are inequalities? What am I talking about when I say inequalities? And then I'm going to specifically look at inequalities in cancer. So mortality, who dies from cancer, incidence, who develops cancer, and also survival, which is kind of a combination of the two. I'm also going to talk, talk about why inequalities might exist and briefly what we might do about them. Before I get into the talk proper, I just want to acknowledge that I'm going to be presenting a lot of sort of facts and figures, but that um, they represent people's stories and people's lives. So I like this quote about epidemiology being people's stories with the tears wiped away. And the, the picture that is uh, shown there are the, the lanterns that were included in a relay for life. So each one of those has been made by the family or, or friends of someone who has died from cancer. So these are people whose lives have been very much um, impacted by cancer. Okay, so let's think about inequalities. So strictly speaking, inequalities are just differences between groups. So for example, there are inequalities between men and women when you think about rates of cervical cancer. But we're not too worried about that. Obviously only women can get that. Inequities are differences that are unfair, so that, we, that we've had, has that extra element of unfairness. Um, and, and inequities can occur across many axes. So you can see listed there on the, on the slide a, a range of different um, axes on which inequities can occur. But the one I'm going to focus on today are ethnic inequities, and that's because um, ethnic inequities are the biggest inequities that we see in New Zealand. So are there ethnic inequities in New Zealand? And the answer is of course yes. This is actually a slide showing life expectancy. Um, and what you can see is uh, that you can see the two green lines. So the top line there is life expectancy for non-Maori women. The green line underneath that one is life expectancy for non-Maori men. Below that, Maori women and then Maori men. And you can see that's life expectancy from 1950 through to more or less current times, but there's still a big gap between Maori and non-Maori New Zealand in terms of life expectancy. And that's unacceptable. But now let's focus in on cancer. So we're gonna look, as I said, on who, who dies from cancer, mortality, who gets cancer, incidence, and who survives cancer once they're diagnosed. Okay, so this slide here, I'm going to show you a lot of um, slides like this. So I'm going to talk through this one quite carefully. This is who dies from lung cancer. So this is mortality. So up the, uh, up the y-axis, you've got mortality rate. So higher is worse. And along the bottom, along the x-axis, you've got time. So you've got early 80s, late 80s, early 90s, late 90s, and early noughties. And then each one of those bars represents a different ethnic group. So you've got the Māori group in a sort of a yellowy colour, Pacific in green colour, and European in that sort of purply colour. Um, and what you can see is, if you focus on the left side of that uh, slide is for males, what you can see is that lung cancer mortality is coming down well, both for European and for Māori males. So that's the good news. So that's coming down over time. But the bad news is that there's, a, there's still a big gap between both between Māori men and uh, European men over the entire time period that we're looking at. And then if you look at the, the women on the other side, you can see that the news is even worse. Uh, rates are actually still going up, mortality rates are going up, and the gaps between uh, European and Māori women are huge. They're really massive and unacceptable. Um, the reason why mortality rates, lung cancer mortality rates are still going up for women is of course that the, the tobacco um, epidemic, the timing of it is different for men and women. And so the time when women started smoking and stopped smoking tends to be later than men. So we're hoping that that will start coming down soon. But the, probably the most important thing for today is that really big gap between Māori and European. Now this is bowel cancer, so this is the same sort of graph, this is still mortality and still looking over time. And if you focus there on, on the males, on, the, on European males, you can see that mortality from bowel cancer was pretty flat until the mid-90s and then it's been going down since then. But if you look at Māori men, mortality rates from bowel cancer have been going up. So whilst in the, the earliest period, in the 80s, 
mortality rates for Māori men were much lower than for European men, by the time we get to the most recent period, it's actually swapped around. And that's important because until recently, bowel cancer was considered primarily a disease among Europeans. And, and you can see that's clearly changed over time. So this is just to give you an idea of all cancers combined. So this is just pulling all cancers together. Um, again, you can see there for, for European men, you can see mortality rates coming down from the early 80s until recent times, gradually coming down, which is good. Um, and for, 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 Euro sorry, for European women, the same sort of thing, rates just gradually coming down. But if you look at Māori men, rates are pretty stable. They're not coming down, so it means the gaps between Māori and European men have increased over time. And if you look at uh, Māori women, it's even worse because rates are actually going up. So those gaps are getting wider. Okay, so one reason why you might expect that mortality was higher among Māori is that incidence might be higher. In other words, Māori are more likely to, to get cancer. So let's look at that. So this is stomach cancer. The first thing I'll say is um, you've got males and females again. It looks like from this, these graphs that females have much more stomach cancer, but if you look at the numbers on the side there, you'll see that actually stomach cancer is much more common among men. So that's the first point I'll make. But the important thing in terms of the talk today is that again, Māori men have much, or Māori in general, have much higher mortality rates from stomach cancer than European men and women. And the reasons for this, there's probably many reasons, but one of the important reasons is probably related to um, infection with H. pylori, which is a particular bacterium which is associated with stomach cancer. And it's known that H. pylori infection occurs, tends to occur early in life, and it's particularly likely to occur in overcrowded conditions or in people living in more deprived conditions. So what we're seeing here may at least in part be related to poverty in childhood. And so we don't often think of cancer being related to uh, living conditions in childhood, but this is an example where that's probably the case. Cervical cancer, it's not all bad. Um, this is uh, cervical cancer incidence over time again. And what you can see here is rates are coming down more quickly for Māori women than they are for European women. Coming down for everybody though, so it's all good, and the gaps are getting smaller. So this is a good news story. Now we're going back to bowel cancer. So you remember we looked at bowel cancer mortality before, now we're looking at bowel cancer incidence. So you can see there for European men, bowel cancer incidence was going up until the mid-90s and then it's flattened out. But for Māori men, incidence is, is still going up. But what's m probably most interesting here is you can see that in, in the most recent time period, the incidence about, um, among Māori men was lower than that among European men. But if you remember what the mortality showed, mortality is higher among Māori men. So you've got the incidence being lower among Māori men, but the mortality being higher. So that suggests that there's something going on with survival. It suggests that there is poorer survival among Māori men than European men. So let's look at that now. Um, this is again for all cancers combined, and it's showing a very similar pattern. So if we, I'm just going to concentrate on the, the, the sets of bars at the left-hand side of the slide. And what you can see is you've got total cancer registrations and then total cancer deaths. There's Māori in the, in the black bars and European in the grey bars. And what you can see is that Māori do have more cancer, so their incidence is a little bit higher. But, but cancer death among Māori is considerably higher. It's about double that of European men. So the gap is much bigger in terms of death from cancer than it is in terms of incidence from cancer. And one of the reasons that people think that this might be when you, when you talk to people is they say this is, a, this is an issue around poverty. We should actually be focusing on poverty. So let's just look at that just to check to see whether this is all about poverty and it's not about ethnicity at all. So these graphs that I'm going to show you is again, it's all cancers combined. I'm going to show you incidence first and then mortality, but this time divided up by deprivation. So by deciles of deprivation. So deprivation has been divided up into sort of 10 groups, from the least deprived to the most deprived. So this is incidence. Got Māori in the sort of bluey grey bars and non-Māori in the white bars. NZ de deciles, so one on the left is least deprived, so richer, and on the right, 
more deprived, poorer. So what you can see is overall, if you look at those bars, there, there tends to be increasing uh, cancer incidence with increasing deprivation. But also what you can see, at every level of deprivation, Māori have a little bit more cancer than, uh, than non-Māori. And that doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, you always see a little bit more cancer among Māori than you do among the non-Māori. But then let's look at mortality. The same thing, but this time mortality. And what's shocking about this is it doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, your mortality if you're Māori is considerably higher. Much, the gap is much bigger than for incidence. It's considerably higher if you're Māori compared with if you are non-Māori. And again, it doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. So this is not about poverty. This is actually about ethnicity. Okay, so let's look at survival. So the work that I'm going to talk briefly about now comes from a report that was written by uh, Matt Soberg um, and Tony Blakely was involved as well. Um, and we looked at uh, cancer survival and a whole range of cancers over a 20 year period. And this is sort of the one slide summary. So what you can see there is where the red bar is right in the middle, not the dashed one, the solid one, if the black bars were all sitting on that red line, that would suggest that the survival between Māori and non-Māori were about the same. The extent to which the black bars are on the right of that red line shows you the extent to which Māori survival is poorer. Māori have worse survival. And the extent to which the black bars are on the left of that line show the extent to which uh, Europeans or non-Māori have better survival. And there's a very clear pattern. You can see there for just about every site, Māori have poorer survival than non-Māori. So why is that? So we did a study looking specifically at colon cancer to try and identify why Māori patients might have poorer survival. And this is just the survival curves from that study. And what it shows is that non-Māori have better survival than Māori as we expected. So what we did is we looked at the three sets of factors that we thought might be important. The first set was related to the cancer itself, so how aggressive the cancer was, how advanced the tumours were at diagnosis, so stage at diagnosis. The second set of factors related to um, patient comorbidity, so how sick the patients were um, in addition to their cancer. And the third set of factors were related to healthcare quality and access. What we did is we identified all Māori patients in a certain period. We identified those patients from the cancer registry and then a random selection of uh, non-Māori patients at the same time, over the same period. And then we went to every hospital in the country and we collected detailed information on those patients in terms of their cancer, the treatment they received and their outcomes. So the first thing we looked at is, did Māori have more aggressive or more advanced tumours in this group? And what we found was, this is, this is the first uh, thing about aggressiveness. So this is relating to grade of tumour. So the, the least, less well di differentiated tumour is, the more aggressive it tends to be, the more fast growing and the more likely it is to have a poor prognosis. So in fact, we found no statistically significant difference between the Māori and non-Māori patients. But if you actually look, if you look at the poorly differentiated group, if anything, the non-Māori patients were a little bit more likely to have poorly differentiated tumours. So they should have actually had a poorer prognosis, if anything. Then we looked at stage diagnosis, and in fact, we found no statistically significant difference in terms of stage either. So there were no differences there. That didn't explain the differences in survival. Then we looked at patient comorbidity. You know, was that the problem? Now we did find this, so this these, are, these just show you the proportion of patients in the Māori and non-Māori cohorts that had a variety of other conditions in addition to their cancer. So in the purpley bars there's Māori and in the sort of pale yellow bars non-Māori. And you can see that for a number of conditions Māori had higher rates of other comorbid conditions, so hypertension, heart failure, diabetes, renal disease, etc. And we do know that patients with those conditions tend to have poorer survival. So this is one of the, the um, mechanisms through which this inequity in survival occurs. But we wanted to think about this a little bit more, and there are two possibilities why people with these conditions might have poorer survival. The first is that they just have a greater physiological load. So they are sicker, they're just less likely to survive from their cancer. And once they get to the health services, there may not be very much we can do about that. But the other option is because they have more comorbidity, they're less likely to be offered treatment. Now, if the treatment is contraindicated or is more likely to cause harm than good because of the comorbidity, that's reasonable. But if 
they actually would benefit from the treatment but they're not getting the treatment, that's obviously a problem. So we wanted to look at that issue. Were people with comorbidity, were they less likely to get treatment? And if they did get treatment, did they benefit from it? So we looked just at the patients with stage three disease. So stage three disease, um, colon cancer, they're recommended to have adjuvant chemotherapy. And we found that those who had higher comorbidity were substantially less likely to be offered chemotherapy. So those without comorbidity, 84% um, of those were offered chemotherapy, but only 19% of those with comorbidity were offered adjuvant chemotherapy. Now, as I said, that's fine if those with comorbidity would actually be more harmed than helped with the, the treatment, with the adjuvant chemotherapy. But we found that amongst those with highest comorbidity, there was around a 60% reduction in the excess risk of death if they were offered chemotherapy. So that suggests that there is at least some under-treatment of patients with comorbidity, and because Māori are more likely to have comorbidity, that impacts unequally on them. So this is an issue that we're wanting to address. The last set of factors we looked at was, were related to healthcare quality and access. So what we found was that if you compared the Māori and the non-Māori patients at any particular step of the treatment pathway, the differences were very small and they were, they were not statistically significant. So if you looked at any particular step, you would probably conclude that there's not, there's not much of a problem here. But what we also found is that there was Māori always did a little bit less worse at every step. And the cumulative effect of that was quite big. So what this graph's showing is that Māori were just a little bit less likely to be referred to an oncologist. If they were referred, they were a little bit less likely to be reviewed by an oncologist. If they were reviewed, a little less likely to be offered adjuvant chemotherapy. If it was offered, a offered, little bit less likely to receive it. And if they received it, less likely for that to occur within the recommended eight weeks. So by the time you got to that last step, which is in that, that pinky uh, bar, the differences between those two pinky bars are quite large. So the difference between Māori and non-Māori, the cumulative effects become quite large. So this graph is showing, it's, it's pulling all this data together. So looking at why there are these differences in survival between Māori and non-Māori patients. The first bar there, the pink bar, you can see that it goes just above 30%. So what that shows is that Māori had 33% higher mortality or poorer survival than non-Māori. So this is a Māori patients with colon cancer had 33% higher mortality than non-Māori patients with colon cancer. When we adjusted for age, year of diagnosis, sex of the patients, nothing much happened. They still had around 30% excess mortality. So that's that sort of yellowy coloured bar. When we adjusted for all of those things and then in addition grade of, of the tumour as well as stage at diagnosis and subside of the tumour, we st Māori still had 33% excess mortality, so that's that purply one. Then we adjusted for comorbidity, and you can see the bar drops down, down to that pale blue one, or the bright blue one. So comorbidity accounted for about a third of the disparity in survival. And when we adjusted for healthcare access and quality factors, that accounted for about another third of the disparity. And we think that if we had managed to measure those things perfectly, we probably would have adjusted, you know, we would have explained away most of the disparity that we saw. Now, just in case you think, well, okay, that's just one study, that's colon cancer, it probably doesn't apply. I've just given you some, some uh, results here from another study, completely independent study, that was carried out in Auckland by Wendy Stevens and others. And this relates to lung cancer. And these findings are taken, these are verbatim from one of her papers. They say, Māori were four times less likely to receive curative rather than palliative anti-cancer treatment for non-metastatic disease compared with Europeans. And that's even after adjusting for age, gender, NZ depth, so deprivation, um, the Charlson comorbidity index, so comorbidity, tumour type, stage, and patient declining management. So even after adjusting for all of those variables, Māori were four times less likely to receive curative, curative rather than palliative anti-cancer treatment. They concluded that such a reduction in curative treatment could generate measurable differences in survival outcome. They also noted that Māori waited longer between diagnosis and treatment, even after, after adjusting for disease and patient characteristics and patient-related delays. So these were delays in the system, not related to the patient. 
So the brief summary is a Māori are 18% more likely to be diagnosed with cancer, but nearly twice as likely to die from it. Cancer-specific survival is lower for Māori than non-Māori for most cancers, and there's good evidence that at least some of this difference in survival is due to health service factors. So why do some groups carry more of a cancer burden than others? The first thing is differential access to, to, to determinants or exposures. So you end up with differences in disease incidence. So in other words, if uh, Māori are more exposed to H. pylori in childhood, they are more likely to develop stomach cancer. So that there are the issues about who's exposed to what. The second set of factors are related to access to health care. So if one group has poorer access to primary care, for example, or poorer access to screening, they're more likely to run into problems with cancer later on. And the third set of factors are differences in quality of care received. So even when you do get into the health services, if one group has better quality care than another group, then there's going to be differences in outcomes. Which brings me to the R word, which everybody is a little bit uncomfortable with, that racism word. And I think it, people are uncomfortable because they tend to think of sort of very extreme, personally mediated racism. But in fact, there are different types of racism. There is med uh, personally mediated racism where one individual um, holds ideas based on another person's um, ethnicity or race and acts differently towards them. But then there's also institutionalised racism, which is a racism that occurs because institutions are set up but within a dominant paradigm, they're set up to suit one particular group of people better than another group. And our health services tend to be set up to suit a Western world view of health and the way cancer and other conditions should be treated. And so it tends to uh, work better for people who hold that whole world view. So that's the idea of institutional racism. And then there's internalised racism, which is the idea that sometimes if you tell people often enough that they're not as good as other people, eventually they'll take that on board. And they'll say, yeah, well, obviously I'm, I'm pretty useless and obviously I don't really deserve the treatment that other people get. And there's that, that, that's that issue as well. But the main issue when we're thinking about health services is probably this institutional racism. So the role of health services, there are two key places to consider. The first is access to primary care. So this is making sure that all groups have access to good primary care and good access to screening in particular when we're thinking about um, cancer services. And we, so that's to make sure that people are diagnosed at a similar stage and as early as possible um, and to make sure they get into the health services. The second thing is to ensure that access through care is the same for all groups. So to make sure the health services work well for Māori and for non-Māori. So how do we address um, inequities through health systems? It's complex and of course there's, there's many, many things that can be done and probably many things that have to be done. But I think it's useful to think of three levels where we can intervene. At the top level there's system levels. So there's things like um, resourcing and location of cancer services, thinking about where we provide cancer services, thinking about the structure and the organisation of cancer service and the composition of cancer service workforces. So to make sure that there are Māori cancer, um, cancer care workers who are helping Māori patients and you know so that there is some consistency there. The second sort of level are regional factors. So that's things like improving access to specialist care in rural areas, or increasing support for patients um, in whānau travelling to cancer services, and making sure that there is really good specialist support for local clinicians. So just sort of making sure that those sort of tertiary level services are also reaching the more rural areas where there tends to be a higher proportion of Māori patients. The other important thing here is thinking about coordination of case management through um, cancer care pathways and obviously that's something that we're all very aware of. But, but I think it's important to remember that it's not just about managing the actual care of the cancer, it's much broader than that. So keeping in mind that a lot of cancer, cancer patients have other chronic conditions and those need to be managed as well. And of course there's a whole lot of other things that are outside health altogether, for example the financial impact um, of cancer can be um, substantial and for people who are already borderline in terms of their ability to pay for things even a slight shift can have a really big impact so being able to think about those things and make sure those sorts of things are managed as well are really important 
And finally, clinical factors. So that's things like optimizing treatment for those with comorbidity, evaluating patient management against uh, clinical guidelines, clinical audit, those sorts of things, and maybe things like training and cultural safety. Although I think that that's less important than these higher level um, approaches. So I'm going to leave the last word to Jonathan Kuya, a friend and colleague, who is um, a cancer surgeon based in Auckland. And he wrote um, in a New Zealand Medical Journal article, we do many things well. Many health professionals manage and communicate with patients and whanau with expertise, care and compassion. However, our health system has become large and sprawling and we can all become ghosts in the machine, attempting to navigate our way through a maze of appointments, admissions and investigations. Thanks for your attention.